I'm uh, Emma Howard. Um, I work for Energy Desk. I'm a journalist. Um, Energy Desk is a editorially independent news site, um, which is funded by Greenpeace and works with Greenpeace. Um, I before that I worked at the Guardian um, on their training scheme, and then worked on the Environment Desk. Uh, that was for a few years. Uh, and during that time, we ran a campaign called Keep It in the Ground, which was about climate change. What did you study? I studied at the University of Leicester and the University of Strasbourg. I did um, an English degree with a bit of French. And you went straight to the Guardian from, from studying? No, um, I went, I did about three years before the, in between, where I was mostly doing kind of activism and community development work and charity charity kind of communications work, so the, the other side, if you like. Right. And uh, what have you been speaking about today? I've been speaking about experiments in climate change journalism, um, and by that I mean that the media, media industry is changing um, a lot, and it ha has done so a lot in the last decade, partly because of financial pressures, um, but this is also meaning that uh, because of financial pressures and because of the rise of the internet, we have lots of new ways of, of doing journalism, and so I was talking about two new ways of telling the story of climate change that I've been involved with, one of which was Keep It in the Ground, a climate change campaign that The Guardian ran for a year in 2015 in the run-up to the um, Paris summit. Um, and the second one, which is uh, Energy, Energy Desk, which is um, the independent news site that, that Greenpeace runs. And how are, you, um, how are people interacting with the work that you do? And how's that, how's that changed over the years? How they interact? Oh, you mean readers? Yes. Um, well, so Keep It in the Ground, for example, uh, the climate change campaign was very, we worked very closely with readers. We asked them what they wanted to know from the campaign. So, for example, the second stage of the campaign, we, we put our big survey and 6,000 people responded and we asked them what, what, who they were and what they wanted from the rest of the campaign and they overwhelmingly told us that they wanted uh, to hear about the transition, hear stories of hope, to hear about renewables, to hear about innovation and, and how it's all going to happen. Uh, which was really interesting learning for us as journalists who often tend to go for the for the bad stories and presume readers are interested in bad stories more than the positive stories. Um, we also got them um, very involved with the campaign itself. So, for example, uh, we were targeting a couple of charities um, and asking them to move their money out of fossil fuels. So we got the readers to write to the board members who would make the decision about investments um, and ask them to, to move their money out of fossil fuels um, and we connected them with campaign organisations so they could get involved with, with protest on the ground. Um, and what's next? What's next? Um, I think I will be at uh, Energy Desk uh, at Greenpeace for, for quite a while, I hope, mm -hmm. um, because um, I'm really inspired by it's quite a new model for, um, for journalism. Um, the beauty of it is we don't have the same um, financial uh, pulls that other organisations have. We don't have to worry about corporate advertisers. We don't have to worry about media tycoons. We just really have to worry about having an impact. Um, so that's really refreshing and liberating. And you can just do journalism in the public interest without having to worry about anything else. Um, and what's next for Energy Desk is that it will soon no longer be Energy Desk, which is quite exciting. Uh, that's quite a kind of elitist name, I guess, which reflects that when we first started, our audience was quite elitist and, and sort of um, energy academics, um, energy journalists, uh, policy makers, but as we're growing, we're, we're sort of popularizing what we do more, um, and so we're sort of rebranding and doing more investigations and podcasts and um, other fun things. So I'm looking forward to, to that. I mean, the, the Guardian is full of in inspirational figures, um, journalists who are doing really amazing work. Um, I keep thinking of men. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I'm not thinking of men. Um, uh, I'm really inspired, actually, by um, both the men and women who um, do the, the the columns. Um, column writing is is really very difficult, um, and they do it extremely quickly. Um, and so, for example, often you you'll sort of watch they'll they'll watch the listen to the Today program at. 7 a.m. and then they'll have to have produced a column by uh, half eight. Mm -hmm. um, 
and they're doing that not knowing what the Today programme is going to say, not knowing what the issue is, often knowing very little about the issue and not only having to say, like a news report would, this is what, this is what happened, but having to formulate an argument around it. Uh, and the speed at which they work is just uh, is incredible. Um, I, so I find their kind of work very inspiring. Um, I've been watching a lot of Beyonce recently. I find Beyonce very inspiring. Okay. Uh, that's as a, as a woman. Uh, she sort of refuses to be defined by, um, by expectations of women. Uh, she's very strong and um, creative, and uh, she lets her work speak for itself. So she's sort of very, her private life is a private life and she just puts her art out there and, and um, lets people interpret it as they wish. Um, and always kind of challenging people's perceptions of, of women and, um, and, bla and of black women as well. Mm. Um, so she's definitely an inspiration. Um, what inspired you to go into journalism in the first place? That's a good question. Uh, um, 1984 was sort of when I read that um, I, was, I was getting quite politically engaged when I was a teenager and sort of knew that I wanted to do something that was political that sort of made a uh, tried to change things in the world um, so I was thinking about politics I was thinking about campaigning I was thinking about lots of different ways you can do that and then I read 1984 and um, that really uh resonate in, t in terms of finding out the truth and that being more important than, than anything else really, uh, making sure you get the facts right, which in the current context is, is quite a challenging theory of change to, um, to be working with. Um, so yeah, I guess that inspired me. Um, my, my, well, my English teacher hugely inspired me, uh, not necessarily to go into journalism, but um, not to go into law. <laughs> right. uh, she was uh, she was wonderful. Um, she was sort of sixty five year old woman, and um, when the students would get bored of of the books they were reading, she would sort of often do quite wacky things, like stand on the desk and start uh, pretending to be a or wow. um, pretending to act out the Midsummer Night's Dream or something, just to get students' attention. And uh, she was extremely passionate about what she did, and um, that kind of uh, persuaded me to do what I wanted to do rather than sort of following the more uh, secure route that, that maybe a, a lawyer would take. Um, yeah. Thanks very much. No worries. That's great. <laughs> Perfect. I really wasn't expecting Beyonce as an answer for that. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been watching a lot of everything.